What is up? It is 413 Barbell Club Radio. I've not been live in a minute. I've been, it's been a very busy month. And I'll be honest, a lot, there's been a lot going on in my life. Not only am I a coach, but I report to myself. So sometimes I'm wearing the Coach Doug hat. Sometimes I'm wearing the business owner hat. Sometimes I'm wearing the let's go get our taxes done hat. Sometimes I'm wearing, you know, all kinds of different hats. Oh, yeah, and I have a family, and I have, I play guitar at my church. I do all this stuff. I train as well. So it's been a busy March. March has, I think, been one of the fastest months I've ever experienced. As far as just, it seems like it was March the 1st, and all of a sudden, it's going to be April 1st, Monday. But it's been a good month, and I'm extremely excited and blessed about where things are in the 413 Barbell Club. And I wanted to do a little Q&A today. First, I want to give a special shout out to Tony Settle. I made a post about him last night. What he has accomplished is really phenomenal. Um, good morning. I wish I could see it. It doesn't show me who left the comment, but somebody on Facebook commented, good morning. Tony Settle came to me in the fall, and he had uh, been through on a fat loss journey. He had lost some weight but he felt like he'd lost some muscle as well. He wanted to build back some of the muscle he used to have. He lives in Louisiana. He's a banker. Um, I can't remember his exact age, but basically he is 60 or maybe another year older than that. But the point is all these guys that are in their thirties and talk about how they can't seem to get the results. They blame their metabolism. They blame well, you know, at 30, your testosterone starts dropping now. And they ignore the fact that their sleep is dropping, that their diet has dropped in quality. And they, they okay, Tony said he's 62, almost 63. It's awesome. He's watching this right now. So I, I see young guys making excuses and complaining. And then we have Tony, who's 62, almost 63. He gained 15 pounds. And as you can see, if you see the picture I posted, his arms look fuller. His chest looks fuller. He actually has ab definition. So he gained weight. He looks more muscular. And he maintained a 32 waist, a size 32 waist. And so I'm just super proud of Tony. And I can give a plan, but it's up for it's up to the other the other individual to execute. And so I just want to give him a shout out for executing that plan and um, we're starting to cut back down a little bit now, and I'm just really excited about what's going to happen. But let's do some Q&A because that's one of my favorite things to do is get questions. I posted this on Instagram last week. Here we go. Question number one. Is there ever a good time to do the carnivore diet? I'll give you a short and sweet answer. No, in my opinion. I believe in balance. I believe in looking at your teeth as a kindergartner would do. When the, uh, the the ranger comes by and brings skeletons and they look at different animals. What does this animal eat? What does this animal eat? What did God design this animal to eat? Well, God designed us by looking at our teeth. A child could tell you we have, you know, the ability and we're designed to eat meat. Yes, but we're also designed to eat plants and, you know, we have teeth for grinding. So it's not, you know, we don't have the mouth of a lion, of, of a tiger. And I think carbohydrates are demonized by many different diets. Technically, carbohydrates are not essential for your body, but they are important. They're the most readily available energy source for your body. And that makes it very anabolic to have carbohydrates in your diet. Carbohydrates do not cause you to hold water. Carbohydrates do not cause you to gain fat and all these things you hear just a good balanced diet will have carbohydrates it will be more sustainable and carbohydrates don't mean um quote unquote junk food you know potato chips like we're talking you know rice and potatoes and you know even fruits and vegetables technically are carbohydrates so i believe in a balanced diet and, the, and these individuals that oftentimes are asking about the carnivore diet, they are 
not content with the progress they've had. And they're thinking, is this the answer? Is that the answer? If you were able to eat a, ba a balanced diet and enjoy a variety of foods and achieve your goal, you'd be happy, right? So it's not about the means you take. It's we have a certain goal in mind. So let's take the most specific route to that goal and the most practical route to that goal. And eating carnivore or keto, none of those are the most practical route or sustainable, period. All right. Second question, what's your current workout routine currently? I have five short workouts per week. Short meaning anywhere from three to five exercises per workout. Uh, each day has a focus. I have a back day, a shoulder day, a leg day, a chest day, and an arms day. But I'm not just training one thing on those days. Um, the four upper body days I mentioned, they all have two to three muscle groups in them. So it's not a bro split. We train like one thing once a week. Uh, one of my clients, Ronnie, coined this term. It's a gentleman split. I've got each muscle group is hit two to three times per week, with the exception of legs. Legs, I just like to get really good and warmed up for and just get it knocked out in one day. Um, so I do have like a mega leg day, which happens to be today after this. Who's excited? So I, th I believe that um, most individuals, if, if you do anywhere from, and you're going to think this is wild, seven to 10 sets per week, not per workout, sets per week per muscle group. That means you only need like seven or eight sets for chest, for legs, for, you know, that's plenty for most people to grow. It's just that the quality isn't there and they like to cushion their workouts with extra exercises, extra sets because they're not at a close enough proximity to failure. Actually, I think I have a question about this later. So I'll just stop there. That's my split. Five, five days per week right now. Um, a funny question I got. Why is your chest bigger than mine? Well, person whose name I won't say, but starts with a D and ends with an Avid. I would say why are your quads bigger than mine? Um, so, you know, some of us have a stronger mind muscle connection with some movements or your body is just better suited for certain movements. Tom Platts was sent from heaven to do squats. Um, whereas if I do squats, it doesn't look good at all. It looks painful. It is painful for my lower back. Um, chest, just the bench press is like the most natural feeling movement. It feels good. Of course, a lot of it is my form. I squeeze my shoulder blades. My shoulders are never rounding forward. I'm not bouncing the bar off my chest and I've got a good arc in the bar path. All those things are important. I also take a more medium grip, which I think a lot of guys go too wide and that's why they only feel it in like their delts and outer chest. Um, a medium grip will hit the inner and upper chest on a bench press. Um, but yeah, so just for some guys, bench press won't be your best bet for chest. It's just you got to find the one that works best for you, that you feel the best, and cook at it a while. Get to cooking. All right. So this is a funny one, too. Someone asked. They're going way back into my history here. I played in a band called Say You Will. They said, which Say You Will album was the best? <laughs> of course, the one I was on, the first one I was associated with. Um, seriously, I mean, seriously, though, the second one was killer. Shout out to Tino Martin wrote some awesome guitar parts on that album, but I think the first one um, musically was more like focused, less partsy. It was objectively my favorite. Um, ultimately, I was I was more excited. I I envisioned us kind of taking on a different sound, almost like an '80s kind of sound with what we had been doing, kind of like um, the the recent Boys Like Girl album. Boys like girls, but um, you know, it was fun while it lasted, and both albums were pretty killer. Um, uh, next question Are you doing any in person sessions or do you just go or, and train online right now? No, and I'm I don't do in person. Occasionally, if I have a client locally, we'll meet at the gym and just go through a workout just for fun, but I, I'm not quote unquote training them during that session. My thing with in-person training, I think 99% of people will get better results 
and will get everything they need and then some with online training, whereas in-person training can be lacking. It's lacking in that the individual shows up and they expect that workout routine to be like, bam, this magical experience that undo that undoes any mistakes you made in the past 24 hours with nutrition, poor sleep or whatever. And it's like, just give me a doozy of a workout. And it's not about having a trainer throw the kitchen sink at you. Feeling tired, sweaty and sore is not the goal. The goal is to get better over time. And with online coaching, I'm ever I'm able to watch your habits what's your progress, objectively look at data, the stuff outside the gym, even more so than the stuff inside the gym. And that's what gets you the result. That's what allows someone to gain 15 pounds while keeping a 32 waist, uh, just giving you a crazy workout with 10 exercises for your chest, making you so sore you can't move. That gives you the best result possible for that day. But today's not the last day you're going to train in your entire life. So it's not about the workout being as difficult as possible, which is what a lot of trainers do. It should be about that workout being the right piece in the puzzle. And sometimes you need a small puzzle piece. Sometimes you need a big puzzle piece, but I believe in getting better, not working harder. Sometimes they're the same. Sometimes they're not. And and that's the accountability and what you get from online coaching. And my, my experience, there's a reason I quit in-person training. All right, six, what's the hardest part of your job? The hardest part of my job, um, I'd say there's two things. One is seeing the potential in individuals sometimes, but they get caught in habits, old habits, emotions, and feelings. And it's like they still get a result, but it's like it could have been better. And I be that's why I believe in, I, I say, faith, family, fitness, I believe in aligning your faith with your fitness for a reason. If you want to grow out of your old habits, that's not a coach thing. And some of us, you know, people look to coaches. It's like, I want to point you to Jesus to get out of your old habits, out of your old emotions. So how you do one thing is how you do everything. And it's like Jesus will go and meet people's you know, needs first, then he would minister them, to them. Right. And it's like, I want you to meet some of the needs in your life with your health and your fitness. I want you to be your best, be the best steward of your temple. And then if you do that in the right way, that will carry over into how you do other things with your job, how you approach things with your family. Oftentimes I find that if you're lacking discipline in your fitness, you're lacking discipline in other areas of life. And don't look inside yourself for that discipline. Look to the strength Christ gives you. And that's what I'm passionate about with 413 Barbell Club. And that's what I feel like makes me different and our club different than other coaching experiences. Um, another hard part about my job, I think, is just seeing, seeing guys that are strong. They think they have it all together, but they don't really. And to be fair, like I said, they're strong. They know the exercises. Their form isn't bad in the gym, but, and they have muscle, but they also have these huge guts. And it's like, well, I'm bigger than you. It's like, yeah, but you're 30% body fat. Of course you're bigger than that guy. If you had to cut down to 10% body fat as well, you would feel better. You would enjoy seeing the muscle you have and not just layers of fat over top of it. Um, I'm sure your blood work and health would improve immensely. Your sleep would improve, but they're too prideful and, and often too scared to stop what they're doing and stop their current routine because they enjoy spending two or three hours in the gym and talking for 10 minutes in between sets. Instead of having a trainer change that for them, they're afraid it's going to turn their, the world upside down. And maybe that's harsh, but <laughs> I'm, I'm just I'm just keeping it real. Like that's what I see. I see a lot of guys that are just afraid to change because, like I said, they're they're doing okay. They have muscle. They're strong, but they also have these guts, and they're just not being honest with themselves about their current state of fitness. Um, they're happy just to look big in a t-shirt and go in and, and be strong. And so that I like to help guys like that. But 
you can't help someone that doesn't want to be helped. So that's the, that's the most challenging part for sure. Um, and I think that was the, okay. One more, I got time for one more question. What do most guys do wrong in the gym? I got this question early last week. And so I actually had time to make a video about it with uh, one of my clients, David. Well, it's just intensity. Like most guys don't bring the appropriate intensity and you can see it on their face. They might kind of grimace on the last rep or so, but then they, they put the bar up. They, they put the bar that up. They put the weight down when it starts getting difficult, right when it's getting to the good part. So the, the reason you could do seven exercises on chest day is because your intensity isn't there for the first two. And I'm not trying to like, you know, put salt in the wound, but like it's the truth. If you would train, you know, like on flat bench press and then like an incline bench press, do six sets with the appropriate proximity to failure, not stopping five or seven reps shy of failure like you usually do, but take it to right up to the limit, fly close to the sun, get one to three reps within true, actual, I can't do another rep failure. And you would commit to that over time, man, you would see much better results. You'd be in the gym less time. You'd feel less fatigued. Um, other areas of your life would improve because individuals in your life would be happy. You're not in the gym for three hours. You were only in the gym for 45 minutes or an hour. And I think, I just think that's the most common problem is the intensity is not what it could be and results aren't where they could be as well. But that's, you know, not the easiest message to hear sometimes when you're in that groove of going in Monday, doing five or six or seven exercises for chest, walking out with a great pump, but you started the workout three hours ago. Again, my preference is results, getting results for busy guys who maybe you are in the gym, but you don't really have time to be in the gym that long. What could you do with two extra hours on Monday? You know, where could that time be spent with your family? Could it be um, doing some things at home? Could it be, you know, growing your relationship with Christ, other areas, a hobby? I'm just all about helping guys be at their best. Now, I want to say this. I am wrapping up a six week challenge right now. Uh, we got about two weeks left in it. And um, there's a few guys that are especially killing it in that challenge. So I'm excited to be sharing their progress in the near future. I will be having a four day challenge coming up in April. So let's let you guys in. Also, in a couple weeks, it's going to be a special day. Of course, 413 Barbell Club is named after Philippians 413. But in a couple of weeks, it will be April the 13th, 413 day. So there's going to be a, a special um, promotion going on that day. So keep your ears and eyes peeled for that. So appreciate you guys tuning in to 413 Barbell Club Radio. We're going to have a small little pre-workout snack and go hit legs. Pray for me. Hope you guys have a great day.